Ahoy hoy YouTube modeling community, it's Lazy Eyed Modeler here in the Woody Workshop. I'm going to do a long overdue uh, stash report. Obviously it's been about a year and a half since I've done a stash report. I won't be able to cover everything, but we'll cover some of the stuff I picked up. Um, before we start, I'd like to mention sometimes content creation can be a challenge. I originally filmed the this stash update on uh, Sunday, December 5th, and I had the whole thing filmed ready to go. I put the SIM card from the camera into the computer. It downloaded one scene, which will be you'll see will be about the, my new lighting systems here, and then. For some reason, it said uh, done downloading eject SIM card. I did, and then every other scene was gone. So then I put the SIM card back in. It couldn't find it, and then it did find it, so I thought I was good to go. I made all kinds of changes. I did my editing and everything. I thought I had a whole film, and when I ejected the SIM card out of the computer, all those scenes were gone again. So I don't know what went on, but that just... That was the end of the stash update. So Monday got up and I had to clear snow for a second day in a row. And it was afternoon when I finally came in here to try to do a round two or uh, you know another attempt of the stash update. And I turned one of my fancy my fancy new shop light up way up there on, except it didn't come on. And I've only had it, well I had it, I bought it November 13th and I didn't install it till last week. So I'd used it about five times and it stopped working. So, so much for doing the update yesterday. And it was just a howling and blowing here. I had no desire to go out and try to return it yesterday. Got up this morning and there was a foot and a half or more snow outside. So after two hours of cleaning and a rest and lunch, I went out and traded in the uh defective shop light and bought a new one and so far touch for mica or mdf or whatever you <laughs> i have to touch more like my head it's working first time the other one didn't work first time it took some effort to get it to work so i should have known but it's working first time i think i can do my stash report so what you'll see first is my original little bit on my new lighting systems and then we'll uh, film the rest of the stash report again. See you in a bit. Ahoy hoy YouTube modeling community it's Lazy Eyed Modeler here in the Woody Workshop. I'm going to do a stash update and so you're probably saying why am I looking at your window if you're doing a stash update. Well I want to show you a couple things before we get to the uh, models and other things and first is and it's probably hard to see but that is a new uh, LED shop light to replace the one that uh, I've been using for close to 30 years the, the tubes were dying and it was uh, it was not terribly bright so that is uh, the latest addition to the shop and then moving down from the window we have this light arch that uh, a friend made that uh, we've gotten to know in the TAPS uh, Zoom meetings that we've been having. Uh, he made one for himself and every time somebody new came into the meetings he'd get, what is that, how did you make it? Uh, he had a friend that asked him to make him one or a couple of friends and then um, he said, well I'm coming down to this uh, meeting we were having in the parking lot at Daily Hobbies and he said is anybody interested and since I can't uh, I can't cut a board square to save my soul and I you know I don't know anything about lighting or anything else it's like yeah I'll pay you to build you one of these so it's basically um, what do you call it MDF I don't know if you can you can see it's a little dark there on the edge, but that's MDF. A um, couple of brackets. 
this the white plastic arch itself is actually some type of trim uh, you know for building and whatnot and then an LED light strip with a with a control so we can make the light brighter or just bring it back to normal so that's a really great addition to the workbench it puts uh, the light right uh, right where I need it um, this is a cheap well it wasn't cheap in the end but it's a cutting mat that we got from Lens Mill Store in Barrie, Ontario 24 by 36 just covers the MDF and I'll probably um, tend to use something else right over it so it doesn't get too ruined but that's uh, the first couple things I wanted to show you here in this stash update so we're gonna set up the uh, camera on the tripod and then we'll um, we'll do the uh, the model kits and other things probably the other things first okay we'll be right with you okay let's get on with the rest of this uh, stash report this is a Radley sorry for the bumping a Radley 8 volt cordless mini rotary tool kit I picked this up at the uh, local home hardware Radley is a name I don't know if they made it up or what but it's uh, for their line of uh, cheap uh, battery powered tools like uh, whippersnippers drills this that and the other thing uh, and this is uh, obviously a rotary tool it has uh, you can go 5 10 15 20 25,000 rpm with it five is probably all we ever need with the uh, modeling it does come with a bunch of bits and stuff as you can see there I mean I have quite a few now I'm not in a big hurry to use this item because I have my trusty uh, Dremel stylus which I've used quite a bit and I still continue to use um, but they did discontinue this years ago and um, I mean I'm not saying it's on borrowed time but it's nice to have a backup. I have a corded one that I can use as backup, but sometimes a cord is a pain in the butt. These were on sale for 25 bucks, and I thought I'd take advantage of it. Uh, the other things you can see here, uh, these are 3D printed caddies for paint. These are obviously for Tamiya. Uh, I have Tamiya and uh, Gunzi lacquer paints on here right now but they're for the 10 mil bottles you can either you know stick your 10 mil lacquers or your 10 mil um, acrylics on here it's a really handy way of storing them they rotate you can check them out and um, like I said in the lighting thing for the MDF here I can't cut wood straight I admire all you guys that make your own shells and stuff but that would be just a disaster for the few things that I do out in the yard uh, outdoor repairs and stuff I usually have to have my wife watching me with the saw just to make sure I cut a piece of wood somewhat straight so anyway we won't get further than that as you see here there's a, a caddy for the dropper type bottles for Vallejo for AK interactive uh, generation 3 or whatever they call their uh, line of dropper bottles and I think there's some others that use this type of dropper bottle uh, another handy little caddy um, I know many of you use uh, excuse me fingernail polish holders the ones that I got here locally at the dollar store were too small so these type of bottles would get stuck in them and I try to grab a bottle and you end up tipping the whole thing over not that they fell out but it was just a pain because <laughs> they wouldn't come out anyway uh, another thing is this uh, handy little uh, holder for um, microsol and microset there's even a couple little holes in here for to stick your uh, brushes in when you're using them it's there it's kind of neat piece because it looks like uh, jet exhaust the fluting on a jet exhaust anyway so that's what that is now these were um, made for the Hobby Center in Ontario, in Ontario, in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. 
uh, they have a whole other um, they have a lot of other available types of caddies and stuff like that if I think of it I'll put a link down below to the hobby center in Ottawa in case some of these items interest you uh, if I don't think of putting the link there just google the hobby center or hobby center Ottawa Ontario and you can find their site it's a uh, it's a great hobby shop I've been there a couple times and uh, although I had a friend pick these up for me I ordered them and he picked them up and brought them down to Whippy when we were meeting there okay that's it for this section we'll look at uh, model kits next thanks okay we're going to start looking at model kits uh, there'll be a lot of sort of cutting through this because there's a few to look at I should have told you to get a coffee or a drink or something <laughs> anyway one of the most talked about kits for 2021 from AMT was the 63 Chevy 2 Nova wagon I was just giddy waiting for this kit because I, I'm not a two-door guy. I like wagons and four-doors and stuff. I'm not saying anything bad about two-doors, but this type of stuff excites me far more than another Mustang or whatever. Anyway, I was thrilled to get this kit. Um, I had heard there'd be another version of this coming out with a full engine and other stuff in it, but I wasn't taking my chances. I really wanted this wagon, so... When they first came out, I made sure I grabbed one. Uh, as you probably know, we did get a different version. So we got this version. It's just coming out now. It's the uh, Chevy 2 Wagon Customizing Kit. 3-in-1 Stock Custom, Advanced Custom. It comes with the, uh, the racing stuff. It comes with the trailer. It has the uh, items like uh, the gas cans that you can see. The driver's helmet, toolbox, parachute, it comes with a display engine, this uh, Hemi engine, but what I'm really thrilled is they put the stock six cylinder engine in it. Uh, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I know so many of you guys out there are V8 fans to the end, but they don't do anything for me to this, to me this is far more interesting than yet another V8. So I'm glad that AMT went and, and put that in there. Uh, you can see some of the other customizing stuff like fender skirts and uh, custom grills and all that type of thing. And I can really see this car um, with the uh, the Ravel midgets, one of the Ravel midgets behind it. I think that would make for a neat, uh, a neat display or a diorama even. Something unusual for me is this Suyata uh, Sop with Camel Kit with Brownie as the uh, pilot, I guess. Obviously, this is a uh, type of egg plane, if you want to call it, an exaggerated, um, um, distorted. Of course, I'm not going to think of the term that the guys used for the build this fall, but uh, you know what I'm referring to. Uh, it just really... I kind of like sop with camels and this was just funky enough I couldn't I couldn't resist uh, picking this one up Atlantis has got a lot of the Atlantis has got a lot of the tools that used to be uh, from Ravel including a series of 132 scale kits this is the uh, 69 Chevy Nova SS a nice little uh, 132nd kit. They also have done a 80 something Camaro and a Firebird, I believe, in this line. The, the Firebird is from this, you know, mid 70s, something like that. I've started actually playing with this one a little bit, but it's not high in my list of priorities. Of course, the other eagerly anticipated uh, kit for 2021 was the Moon Eyes Dragster. And I uh, got sucked into the hysteria as well so I picked one kit up to build as a Moon Eyes Dragster and if you've seen any reviews on this you know that there's quite a few additional parts left over when you're done building the Moon Eyes Dragster. There's some very good um, suspension parts in here that you could uh, really put to use on uh, backdating say the Ravel uh, 29 uh, Roadster or the 30 Coupe uh, to make it more period correct so the buggy springs 
that type of thing is in here and uh, I really it's one of those where you kind of wish you'd picked up two or three but from what I understand these are already sold out from Atlantis so they're going to be harder to get but they have indicated they might bring it back uh, next year sometime to do another run so we'll see one of the themes for NNL East 2022 is small cars or little cars um, I forget right now what the term is it's also the 50s but anyway I picked this one up because I thought it would fit right in with the small cars theme it's a Honda N360 race configuration part 2 fairly simple a uh, little Hasegawa kit and I just thought that would look kind of funky on the tables especially you know without a grill or whatever in there it's a pretty sharp little unit I picked up from Nunu this Volvo 240 Turbo which is the 1986 Hockenheim winner uh, I have the Tamiya station wagon race car race Volvos and uh, there was an earlier version of this new new kit pardon me I just thought I just think it's so funny to see these bricks racing I mean you might see them in the 24 hours of lemons these days but to think they were you know racing and winning back in the day I think it's just fantastic and it makes for a funky race car build so I couldn't resist when I, Ravel announced this and showed the uh, the pictures online on Facebook and wherever else, I just thought that is a really cool setup. I know there have been a lot of complaints about the little buggy being really, really basic with plastic tires and stuff, but that's where either you get creative and come up with alternatives or you just do some really good modeling and try to make that look really good. And the bonus is getting the uh, half cab on the Bronco at the same time so uh, that was uh, very desirable I decided to pick it up I decided uh, that I really like the idea of these Ford service bed trucks Just try to get more of them into the frame here um, the one is a 65 as you can see there and the other is a 67 one of the reasons I picked up more than one is I want that service bed for this kit, which is a 72 Chevy. And now I just have to find, uh, hopefully, a resin to backdate the 72 into a 69. Because the project I want to do is a 69 Chevy with a service bed like that. So one of them will kind of donate its bed to that and the other probably the 67 I'll build up as it looks there and uh, everybody has to have a service truck in their their collection don't they I happened to wander into Michael's here in Canada one day uh, not expecting much because their um, selection has been really poor lately but I was very surprised to find this kit, the Jaguar XKE E-Type by Ravel. And uh, being Michael's, of course, it was a little on the pricey side, but with a 30% coupon, it made it cheaper than what I could have picked it up from a hobby store. So I decided to pull the trigger and grab the Jaguar. Uh, I mean, one of the most beautiful designs ever, either the Roadster or the uh, Coupe like this. So I couldn't resist picking that one up. And then we've got this Revell Germany T2 bus, VW T2 bus. I, I have a real fondness. I mean, I love all VWs after Fords. <laughs> I love all VWs. I have a number of split windows in the stash. But one of the first vehicles I learned to drive standard on was a 1969 uh, bay window bus like this. It was uh, dark green, I think they call it Peru green and white. Uh, it was actually, 69 actually had the lower, um, the turn signals lower on the, below the headlights. And they had smaller tail lights, more like the uh, split windows did. 
but I figure this could be as close to my friend's bus that I'll ever get. It's the, like I say, one of the first buses or one of the first vehicles I learned to drive standard on and uh, so I've had a soft spot for these for years and I was just thrilled when I heard Ravel was bringing these out. I actually bought two of them just because I want to build one is the one that I remember from my youth because I was 17, 18 maybe when he had that bus. Uh, so I want to build that one and then I hope to build like a lowered uh, more custom bus with the other one. So even though I'm not a member of the Salvino's Builders Club I have picked up a number of their kits over the last year and a half. Um, we'll just look at some of them. There is the Blue Max 83 Le Mans driven by Tim Richmond. A nice uh, simple scheme with easy decal work to do. Um, there's this Petty 72 Charger uh, driven by Buck Baker or Buddy Baker. One of the Bakers. I'm sorry I didn't double check before I started filming. I think this is really neat because of it is um, Petty Blue on the inside and Fluorescent Red on the outside. It's uh, just, it, it looks so weird when you're used to the other Petty cars. Uh, that I couldn't resist that one <clears throat> and there again it should be a simple as far as deckling and whatnot a simple scheme to do because you know there's no fancy graphics or anything like that it should be just you know it's just a fluorescent red outside and then you put the decals on Mike's decals uh, when the charger was coming out had a deal where you could buy uh, just this plain wrapper type uh, Dodge Charger and then you got the decals of your choice and so I got this one and it has the number 12 Coca-Cola decals in it <clears throat> uh, that'll be a bit more of a challenge and then being a bit of a Petty fan I haven't picked up every Petty car that they've done but I've picked up these Dodges so there's the 72 Dodge Charger the 73 Dodge Charger which was the original release for the Dodge Charger from Salvino's and then this 76 Dodge Charger up there um, I think I may have picked up even a couple more I you know in the year and a half I kind of forget what came in when but uh, I'm looking forward to these and especially uh, probably start with that number 11 and I do have the I've picked up the fluorescent decals for the three Richard Petty chargers okay in the last few, uh, in the summer, Daily Hobbies in Whitby, Ontario had a couple of trunk sales. So people would come, they had a spot set out for them in the parking lot, and they basically brought kits to sell. Some had some big displays, some just had a few, but anyway, I picked up four kits during those trunk sales, and uh, one of them is this original issue... 29 Model A. I should have adjusted the camera. Sorry. The 29 Model A Roadster. This is the uh, original version that came out in what, 2018, 2015. Oh my gosh, that long ago. Anyway, this is the original version that came out in 2015. Can't have too many of those. I did say I enjoy VWs, mainly air cooled, but I picked up this. Uh, Ravel VW Rabbit Kit just for a nice basic little rabbit build. <clears throat> One of the weirder items for me is this Ferrari Barchetta. Um, I actually had this kit a number of years ago and I decided to part with it because I wasn't that keen on it. I think I got it real cheap and then it's kind of grown on me over the years and I thought this would be an, a neat painting exercise and whatnot and so I bought it from my friend Doug who was selling it at the trunk sale and uh, actually those first two kits came from my friend Ken who was uh, selling at the trunk sale I don't know if you've seen this kit before I think it was a Ravel Germany kit before and it might have even been from somebody else but kind of a neat weird neat vehicle and another one that I got from my friend Ken is this Bedford OLB uh, L 
WB, so long wheelbase O series or Z O series, I'm not sure, five ton tanker. I don't know if you've ever seen these MHAR kits, but they are just jewels. They're beautiful, beautiful kits. Now, admittedly, um, you're paying a lot of money for them. In the hobby shop that day, I checked the price and it was well over $100. So this one was pretty cheap at uh, 70 bucks, which I know is not cheap, but it was a, a great buy. <clears throat> And last but not least, I went to that show in Windsor, so you can check the coverage of that out on my channel. Uh, I picked up this Turbo Vet. It's the 120th scale uh, line that MPC did. It's going to be painted purple, and you can probably figure out what that it's going to be. It's uh, it's a custom car. It's a custom Vet. Um, so I'm not sure what year, 78 or so, but you'll be seeing more of this one soon. Okay, thanks guys. Talk to you soon. Bye now.